So yeah, we haven't made a video in a while. Uh, we're a little rusty, guys. We've, we've been we've been busy. We've been sick. We've had a bunch of projects that we got behind on because we were busy and sick. Oh, dude, we've been down with the illness. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here's the long-awaited semi-complete prototype. Now. We're, we're running with solid core for the tentative name for this printer for at the now. moment. For now. Make, make change. We'll, we'll, make we'll change. see what happens. But we had a few major goals for this project. Uh, the first one being we wanted it to be theoretically completely scalable. So, so the only things that you would have to swap out in order to scale this printer, either larger or smaller, obviously are going to be your extrusions and your linear rails. And then if you have these plates on the side, obviously those won't make themselves any bigger or smaller. But swap out the extrusions and the rails and use the same parts and you can make this printer just theoretically as small or as large as you want. Fingers crossed. We'll see how that goes. Then the other thing that we did that a handful of people aren't overly fond of is we're going with all three, for the Z-axis, we're going with all three independent motors. Now, right now, we have those on the top because we didn't think some of that stuff fall the way through for this <laughs> prototype until halfway through it. So the next one, the Z-axis motors aren't going to be up here on top. They're going to be down here on the bottom. <clears throat> and that, that was totally my fault. Like, I wasn't pointing fingers. <laughs> okay, so I thought the Z-axis motors looked really cool on top, you know. And after we machined all the parts and built it, you know, it kind of dawned on me. I'm like, hey, you know, as the as the motors move the bed up and down, basically you're adding the possibility of deflection. Okay, um, we don't know. We we really don't know until we get there. You know, we'll measure for deflection. I mean, this is quarter inch thick aluminum, so I think we're good. But <laughs> just as a design um, precaution, yeah, just 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 as in good design. We want, we want to do it right, and we don't. We want to minimize any kind of possibilities of stuff and go wrong. And having the motors on top, basically, um, basically you're adding the possibility for deflection as the bed moves up. And all of your accuracy on the X and Y is based off of these plates, this carriage, right? So as the bed moves up and down, say, say you have a problem with, uh, for some reason, the ball screw turning not concentric with the actual motor well you'll get you'll get some kind of wobble effect right um, the wobble effect will will basically uh, transfer to the plates and you'll get you'll get on, on a small scale you'll get some kind of deflection okay now these are solid plates but the way everything's mounted here it, uh, you can actually pull on the frame and twist the frame. We've seen it. Now this printer is smaller compared to what we're used to building. Uh, when you get when you get to larger printers, basically you'll see stuff like that actually go on, where the frame can actually twist a little bit. I mean, it would just be just a tiny bit. If we move the Z-axis motors to the bottom and change the geometry a little bit, rearrange stuff, we could actually make these plates where they'll work with uh, basically independent Z-axis on all three motors or uh, a belt routing system. If you want to have independent uh, step motors for your Z-axis, no problem. If you want to have uh, basically a belt routing uh -huh. system underneath, no problem. Same plate. I, I think that's a big thing for the larger printers like that with the, the larger bed size is the independent motors. All right, so a lot of y'all are probably thinking, Independent Z-axis motors, no, 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 no. I, I hear a lot of stuff on the internet about independent Z-axis motors not being in sync. True, in the past, that was a big issue. If you're using a cheap Ramps 1.4, uh, yeah, you're probably gonna have problems, okay? Now, with current electronics um, and firmware, such as like Duet Wi-Fi and RepRap firmware, uh, using like the expansion board, that is not gonna be an issue. You're not gonna have a problem. Um, what we learned from building the workhorse printer was when it comes to uh, bed leveling, uh, mesh leveling, uh, auto leveling, independent z-axis motors definitely comes in handy. All right, so think about it this way. You come down, you probe your bed, you make a virtual grid of the bed, and you print to it, right? So where this really comes in handy with the independent z-axis motors is 
the motors will compensate for the curvature, right? So as the bay curves up and down or dips down or whatever, what you'll see is one, uh, one Z-axis motor will actually be turning less than the other. So basically what it'll do is it'll compensate with independent Z-axis motors, with uh, combined with auto leveling and mesh leveling. Yeah, this is not gonna be a problem. This is the way to go. So, and that's, that's basically it. <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so we're thinking big, large printers. Like, this is supposed to be a scalable modular machine, right? Uh, so basically, we're trying to design everything around the idea of, hey, if I'm going to build a printer this big, you know, how is everything going to be set up? Once you get to a certain uh, build volume, really independent Z-axis motors is definitely a way to go. And that's the route we're going. Uh, but if you don't want to use independent Z-axis motors, say you're on a budget, uh, you don't want to have to buy a Duet Wi-Fi or expansion board, we're redesigning these plates so you can use independent Z-axis motors or you just have a belt routing system underneath here, uh, which, which is the next step. Alright, so we still, we still have a lot of work to do. This, this printer is not done. This is still in development. Uh, the next stages of this build is we plan on redesigning the whole carriage and gantry system. Uh, we have a lot of work to do actually. Um, so this linear rail right here, obviously there's not a support underneath it. Uh, we're gonna have some kind of support or um, what I call a semi support. Basically, if it's gonna be modular or scalable, um, you can't have a support cut the exact length, right? If you're reusing printer parts that you already have laying around, you may have issues when you actually assemble everything of getting everything the right length. So we're thinking semi supports is gonna be the way to go. So it'd be it'd be more modular and scalable because depending on how length, how long your linear rail is and how much clearance you have or don't have or stretch or whatever, it gives you a lot more room for adjustment or it just gives you more wiggle room in general. The next change that we're probably going to make on this is the linear rail, we're actually going to move it in 90 degrees, kind of like what you see on the rail core. And we think that will allow us to get more travel room on the X and Y axis, well the X axis. Alright, so when you think about the linear rail being, I call it horizontal right here versus vertical. In the horizontal position, by the time you add the hot ends and the extruder, if you want a direct drive extruder, uh, one of the problems we ran into on the workhorse was the way we mounted the hot end. We're mounting from basically what they call the cold end, uh, the very top of it. And by the time it reached down the C channel, basically you had the flexion point, okay? So basically we're, tr we're trying to balance the pull of the hot end and printing tip and the belts. So th there's, a, there's a lot of thought put into this. Um, all right, so if you think about like most of the Core XY printers, uh, what you'll find is the motors are actually turned the other way up. And that brings us back to balancing the pull, okay? So when you think about all the forces and the torque and everything, uh, we want to bring everything to the, more to the center, right? So we had the motors pointing down. If you pointed it up, basically what you would see is the belts will run across the carriage and above right here. So I don't know, I, I, it seems like it'd be more balanced this way. So that's the way we're going. All right, All right so another reason we're probably gonna um, reposition this linear rail 90 degrees is we wanna add a tool changer. And it'd be a lot easier to put a tool changer on it like that we would be able to mount and grab tools more rigidly. Um, think about it this way, if you have a hot end stretched down, uh, all the forces that are being applied and repositioning, um, basically we wanna balance, we wanna balance the forces and the pull. I like good stuff. I was saying, and <sighs> don't forget internet, the word of the day is basically. Basically? Basically. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Once we did that, the need for this plate to be so large over exactly, here was going to save us exactly. more space and give us more more travel room yeah, here for yes, the yes. I guess that's the X axis probably. Yeah, we may possibly actually move these these motors onto the other side. We've been playing around the idea. Uh, the problem is this extrusion runs across, but if you flip the motors to the other side up, 
if you flip them over 180 degrees, shaft up, um, that's not an issue. The belt can actually go over the frame. So that, that's a possibility too. It's kind of what the rail core is doing. Um, I was trying to move away from that. Um, basically, not... basically this is on we wanted to keep the pull from the belts balanced. We wanted to keep it uh, confined like in the center, basically your center of pull and torque. Uh, in the center of the, the actual gantry, right? Instead of having your belts above the gantry and all the pull going from the top, you basically wanted it down, centered, and balanced. That way there's um, way, way less chance to slop. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It, because it, you need... It, it just gives you more rigidity, you know? And rigidity is good mm -hmm. until it breaks. <clears throat> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> but you can see it's still a work in progress but you can also see work is being done so sorry guys we're not completely AWOL it's an old prototyping table we got set up over here right. and we wanted the printer to have an enclosure plus we have like upgradable all metal parts okay <clears throat> nothing against 3D printed parts you know so you gotta work with what you got but when you cut metal all day, it's like, hey, let's make this out of metal. Well, so, I mean, it's, it's also you're looking at 3D printed stuff. It's fantastic for prototyping, prototyping parts, making sure everything works and fits accordingly. And then once you've got everything good and done in prototype, move on to the metal stuff. 